Okay, so so here's what's going on right now. I am in the process of getting my gear cleaned up. Now, if you look down here right now, you can see this is where I work right now. This is my daily uh, workstation area. I basically get the dinner table with laundry on it. But a few weeks ago, my buddy Miyagi tagged me in a gear cleanup video. Basically, the idea is I gotta get my gear cleaned up. And if you take a look at this mess right here, um, yeah, I got work to do. I got all kinds of work to do. Let's get in the truck. Let's head out to Walmart. Uh, we'll do some social distancing in the process and see if we can't get our hands on uh, some new tubs or gear or something. I know right now everybody's a little weird in town because of all of the COVID stuff. I'll take you out there with me in the truck, but I make no promises based on anything else. So we're going to head out there right now, get in the truck, go to Walmart, get some tubs, come back, and see if we can't clean that mess up. All right, we are on our way, heading out to Walmart to pick up some new tubs and some new things to hopefully organize my mess because uh, I definitely have a mess. It's so weird filming myself while driving. It's so, so weird. You gotta love it when you're in the midst of videoing something and the battery goes out in your microphone. So I don't know what got recorded and what didn't, but what I do know is now I'm on camera audio, so we'll, we'll hope it's not awful. We'll see what happens. There are things that let you know you're not a seasoned vlogger, and one of those things is not turning your radio off when you're vlogging. Like, it just, you should know better. You shouldn't be turning your radio on than trying to talk into a camera that's picking up the audio from your radio too. So yeah, so that's my bad. Okay, so as I'm driving up here, hopefully nobody freaks out when they see this guy with a camera driving up, but there's actually caution tape up in here and you have to go through the caution tape to get inside. Okay, so it looks like I got everything I needed. As you can see, a lot of stuff in here and uh, hopefully here soon I'm gonna have my, my gear pretty cleaned up. I'm gonna be honest, if you ever wanna feel like you're not very good at organizing your gear, go watch Miyagi's video. And by the way, if you haven't checked out Miyagi, you really need to. That guy has some of the best content. And uh, when you watch his channel, make sure you look for trips that include a guy named Milos. I promise you, you will never experience anything in backpacking video lore quite like the man known as Milos. He's just, he's one of the most hilarious people in the world. And I thought it was an act. I thought it was all fake until I talked to Miyagi and he told me point blank, Milos is for real. Like he is, he is legitimately the guy you see in those videos. I'm still not sure if I'm a believer in that, but I will tell you, if you haven't had a chance to see Miyagi's videos with Milos, you definitely need to go check them out because they're pretty awesome. Okay, looks like we got everything loaded in. All of the, these new tubs are here. Got that mess to put away. And a lot of this stuff to clean up. So here's hoping that uh, I can make some headway on this. All right, Miyagi, you can get off my back now. I'm gonna show you how I organize my gear. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start from this side here and we're gonna work all the way across I'm gonna to explain to you why I do what I do and how I do what I do. So we're gonna start right over here if you wanna take a look at this. So these are my trekking poles. Now the ones I use all the time, they're not in this because uh, I keep those in my truck. For me, I like to have them in the truck so if anybody says, hey, let's go for a hike, I can jump out and just go. I'm always ready to go for a hike so those just stay in the truck. But uh, I got some from Tac Niner here. These are carbon fiber. Haven't had a chance to use them yet, but I'm gonna try and use them this summer. These are the first pair of trekking poles I ever got, and I hate them. But if I have other people go out with me and they need trekking poles, I've got some they can use. So it works out. You'll also notice I've got these bags for my, my sleeping bags. Um, 
I tend to store my sleeping bags and my my quilts pretty specifically. Um, sleeping bags, I like to use these set, these stuff sacks, or I guess they're not stuff sacks, they're storage sacks. So I like to store these in these. This is my uh, Green Kazoo by North Face. It's about a five degree sleeping bag. I use this when I want to Kilimanjaro, keep me nice and warm. Uh, I've got my East Hills 15 degree here. Uh, did a review on this, you can catch that in the uh, card right up here if you want to see how that went. Uh, good sleeping bag, kind of a nice budget option there. Then of course, this is my Aegis Max UL sleeping bag. Uh, this is actually going to be the sleeping bag I'm going to use this summer. Uh, I did a video on gear I was going to use this year and I had said I was going to use a the bear blanket, the lazy bear blanket. Um, but I've decided against that. Um, I really forgot how much I love this. This uh, It's technically a sleeping bag, but if you can see the way it's zipped up in the back, you can use this as a quilt in the summertime with a, with a sealed foot box that's completely sewn in and uh, it works really well in a hammock. So I'll probably be using this all summer long. So if you start up here, we've got a bunch of uh, different things up here. I got, I got raincoats, uh, I got a, a synthetic jacket and one of my down jackets up here. Uh, so those are there. I've got hiking socks, um, base layer stuff. I've got like three buffs up there in this one. This one here is the extremely cold weather stuff. This has got Arctic gloves and I think I just said Arctic, but I meant to say Arctic. But this has the Arctic gloves in it and some other really warm, warm clothing that I would need if it got cold. If you look right in here, you can see I've got my dehydrator. Uh, I've got some paper towels. Uh, some Ziploc bags. I've got garbage compactor bags if I know I'm going to be going out in some really, really wet weather and I, wanna, I don't want to take any chances on my stuff getting wet. Um, I'll throw one of these inside my sleeping bag. Um, I've also got this really cool Pelican case that my brother-in-law gave me. Um, it's just a waterproof case that I, I don't really use it on backpacking trips, but if I'm car camping or anything and I want to keep something dry or I'm going to be on the beach or somewhere where there's going to be water, this thing's pretty awesome. Right next to that, I've got just kind of a, this is a little box that has just like pens and pencils and some stickers and there's maps in there. Um, keep that up here. It's the one little offshoot thing that's up here. This is all of my hygiene stuff. We've got water bladders here with some tubing for those. Uh, down here, I've got all my kitchen utensils, pots, stoves, all that stuff's right here. Down here, this is food. I got mountain houses. I got peak... Uh, performance, all kinds of different uh, brands of food in there. This one is different things like my my bear bags, rock sacks, things like that are all in here. And then just like every other backpacker who has one of these containers, this is the infamous crap ton of fuel. Like so you can see I just, I mean half of these don't have anything in them and the big one is actually the one that I feed the other ones with so I can keep those full. Then right down here I've got water filters. Um, my lovely wife got this for me for Christmas one year, a little life straw, so if we ever hit a pandemic, weird thing we did, um, I would have this available to me, which is kind of nice. So uh, I've got filters in there. I've got some Sawyer filters. I've got a Hydro Blue that, as you can see, got used pretty extensively. Um, I've got all those in there. The next one is dirty water bags. I've got the Sawyer bags, and I've got two of the Canuck Outdoors bags, which I really like these. Uh, I've got one that fits on the Hydro Blue. I've got one that fits on a Sawyer. They actually are different the way they're threaded. So I've got those. And then on the very bottom, I got some stoves. I got a couple alcohol stoves. I've got my MSR Pocket Rocket 2, my uh, BRS 3000. Got a little windscreen right here by Tokes and uh, an alcohol container that sit down there. And if you go to the very bottom, this is kind of a fun one. I'm going to put this on this table real quick so you can see this. But uh, <laughs> this is just bottles of all kinds. I've got Nalgene bottles. I've got a Hydro Flask bottle. I've got, uh, I got little shakers, cold soak jars, just all kinds of plastic bottles in there. So basically, anytime I get a water bottle, I keep it because you're just going to use them when you go on the trail. Of course, down here, I got all my, my shoes. Right down here, I've got my Ultra Lone Peak 3.5s. Next to them, I got my Merrill Moabs. I've got my 
uh, Solomon Wachimahuchi boots that I've used years ago, but I haven't used in a long time. Uh, I've got my Saucony Mad River TRs, which I love. And then I've got the Speed Cross 4s. And can I tell you something about Speed Cross 4s? I don't like the Speed Cross 4s. They're made for people, they're made for people with really skinny feet. And you know what I don't have? I don't have skinny anything. So I'm not a big fan. So, um, Tim Watson, if you need another pair, let me know. I might give these to you. All right, if you notice, I like to keep my, my quilts hanging up, and there's a really good reason for that. Um, anything that has a baffle like this, that's a vertical baffle, um, I like to hang them this way as opposed to hanging them straight up and down. If you notice, on this sleeping bag, they have horizontal baffles. The horizontal baffles are fine to hang like this because nothing will just drop to the bottom. But on these quilts here, I like to hang them up this way so that that, that down isn't just falling to the bottom of the bag and then... It will compress a little that way. It's not bad, but it's just a pain to try and get that all to come back up. I just like to keep it like this. It keeps it nice and, and puffy and fluffy and happy and, and joyous and warm and, you know, all of the, all of the things that a, that a quilt should be. All right, this first quilt is my Zero Degree Bandit from UGQ. This is my favorite quilt. And probably from here on out, I'm going to be buying UGQ quilts because... The stitching is phenomenal, the construction is phenomenal, the fabrics are phenomenal, the fill, they're 30% overfill, so it's just an awesome, awesome bag. Plus they have this tensioning control that really tightens the bag up to you, so uh, when you're asleep at night there are no drafts, there's no nothing. These are great. Underneath that is my 15 degree under quilt from Outdoor Vitals. Um, this is actually a really good quilt. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to like this one, but it has kept me warm in some really cold weather. As a matter of fact, I have used this in, uh, in 15 and 20 degree weather, and um, there's a little bit of a chill, but not too bad. So this has done a really good job for me. Underneath that is a 40 degree Costco quilt that was actually given to me by Jeremy LaCroix, who you may know as Midwest Backpacker. If you don't know Midwest Backpacker, make sure you check out his channel. I'll put a link in the description so you guys can check him out. He just sent this to me, he found out I was looking for a warm weather underquilt, so this will probably be my underquilt this summer, and uh, really appreciate it. It's a beautiful shade of purple, a really nice underquilt, and under here is faithful, good, and true, enlightened equipment, Revelation 20 degree quilt. This went with me on the entire Sheltoe Trace. It's been on every trip up until this year. I'm actually retiring it for a little while just to just to try something different, but uh, great quilt, great quilt. If you look down here in the bottom, these are my backpacks. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a Gregory, an Osprey, a Kelty. I've got my ULA Ohm 2.0, which I love dearly, and then a little hydration pack on top of that. They're all in there. Um, up here, I've got just some extra photo equipment. I've got my Hilltop Packs Dyneema camera bag, which I have used on multiple trips and love. Uh, a lot of GoPro stuff there. Um, this is a sack that, I mean, everybody's got one of these. Everybody. This is called the sack box. It just sacks everywhere. I mean, compression sacks, Dyneema bags, stuff sacks, um, even some little things here, little Ziploc type bags. Um, but those all go in that little, that little box container thing right there. So this one here is just kind of my, I'd call it my ditty box. It's got different kinds of cordage, it's got permethrin, it's got picaridin lotion, it's got fire starters. Um, all of that stuff is in this one. It's just kind of the grab-all uh, container that I have. There wasn't really a place to put each individual thing, so they just kind of all ended up in here. These are all my blades. Um, I say blades because it's just stuff that cuts things. Okay, and here are just the different kinds of... Uh knives and things that I have. I've got my Pocket Boy uh, Silky Saw, which is awesome. I've got this knife from Apache Pine. i got a Mora knife in here, fixed blade. I've got this Spyderco Tenacious, which a uh, great little knife. So just basically different kinds of blades in there. That's all right there. And just underneath that is everything that I would need for a med kit. There's gauze. I've got KT tape, Luco tape, uh, band-aids, medication, sterilizing stuff, it's all right here in this container. Okay, so I'm gonna lift the veil here and kind of show you what's going on right here. Um, this box right here is my electronics. Uh, I've got power cables, uh, chargers, all kinds of stuff in here, headlamps, anything that's electronic that I take out in the, in the back country with me. This one right here has 
uh, chairs, a sit pad. It's got, um, it's got all of my poles and tent stakes and everything for my tents are in here. Spreader bars for my hammock tarp are in here. Uh, all of that stuff just stays right in here. Uh, it's also got some guy lines and things like that for tarps. Then right next to that, if you've been watching my channel for some time, you know what this is. These are pillows, and Lord knows I have way too many pillows. Um, my wife will shake the camera to tell you that she agrees with me on that, see? So uh, all these different kinds of pillows in here. Uh, of course, my all-time favorite, the Nemo Philo Pillow, which I got a new one. <laughs> yeah, remember I, I left mine at the hotel in Florida? I got a new one. I'm so happy. So all of my pillows go down in here. Then right underneath that are all my hammocks and hammock tarps. They're all right here as well as my suspensions um, and, and anything else that I use to hang hammocks with. Everything is right here in this container. Up in here, it's real simple. Lots of Tyvek. I just have a ton of it sitting up here. Um, pieces that I can cut to use for different tents, to use under my hammock. This is the one I typically use under my Fly Creek. Uh, UL2 and I use under my hammock and I've been using this piece of Tyvek now for about a year and a half It's never failed me. It's not nearly as noisy as it used to be because it gets used a lot but uh, keep all the Tyvek and uh, Any kind of ground sheet that I have is going to be put back there as we scoot over here We'll just go down here to the very bottom and look This is my Osprey child carrier backpack. I love it because I love to take my kids hiking with me and when I take this with me, they get to ride on my back if they get a little tired. Um, I actually did a hike with my daughter, and uh, there is actually a video for that. I'll put a link to that up above so you guys can go check that out if you want. But it's, it was an awesome time. She loves getting in this. As a matter of fact, all she talks about is wanting to go hiking with me. So uh, we're going to have to dust this off here in about a week or so and get her out on the trail again. Over here, I've got my tents. Uh, I've got... The, the first tent that I ever used backpacking, and that was my Eureka Midori Solo. Then I got my Fly Creek, my Big Agnes Fly Creek UL2. Uh, I just bought this tent recently. This is the uh, Sweet Sweet by Sierra Designs. I'm going to be using this out west for a trip that I'm doing. And then, of course, this is my Coleman way too heavy, way too big uh, tent that everybody buys one of these when they start camping because they think they need the biggest tent in the world whenever they go out. And so... I'll bet this thing weighs probably 15, 20 pounds, but you can sleep like an army of people in it. Up here, I've got some old sleeping bags from back in the day. Um, an old self-inflating sleeping pad. I've got one of the closed cell Thermarest sleeping pads here. Of course, I've got my ULA CDT. This is my first ever frameless pack. So I'm a huge fan of this backpack. Uh, I've gotten to use it one time. <laughs> So I cannot wait for restrictions to be lifted, for this COVID thing to be over with so I can get this thing back out on the trail. And the very last thing that's up here is this 45 degree uh, marmot sleeping bag that I've bought and I couldn't tell you what kind of sleeping bag it is. Um, I believe it's like a Nano Wave, I think Nano Wave 45 or something like that. Um, nice sleeping bag, really, really nice sleeping bag. Weighs less than two pounds. When I first got into backpacking, I wanted to get a sleeping bag I could use in warm weather that didn't weigh a whole lot and would get down pretty small. And this thing gets down about the size of a baseball cap. So it gets really small and it's great when I go backpacking with other people because I can loan them this bag, this sleeping bag, and it works great for them. All right, Miyagi, I did what I said I would do. That is my storage system for all of my gear and what I take with me out in the backcountry. With that said, guys, thanks so much for watching the channel. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you find out every time one of these videos drops. And if you found value in the video, make sure you hit the like button. And until next time, stay strong, hike long, and I'll catch you on the next go around.